in the name of the triune God, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, we join in thanksgiving and prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that we have got to wake up this new morning we thank you that you have blessed these our services and continue to ask for the blessing for this service day And we thank you for your son who you allowed to come on this earth and die for our sins. To make our faith righteous. We ask that the invitation of your gospel could be helping people outside your kingdom to come take part of this grace and have a personal forgiveness of sin on their hearts. the words your son has taught us. Our Father, heart in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I ask to read from the Bible, from Mutual Study. From the Gospel of Matt. And the words are his name. And Jesus answered, Simon, son of Jonah, you are righteous, his blood and flesh did not tell you that but my father who is in heaven. You are Peter, and on this rock I want to construct I'll give you the keys to the heaven and for those who will forgive sins they shall be forgiven and for those who shall keep them they shall be kept.
is the precious gift that we have, the Word of God, which is unchanging. One thing that stays always. It is safe in these days when we see the speed of change that is challenging us to keep up with it. But it is good that we can have something tangible that we can hold on to. And we have a treasure like this, Lord Jesus Christ. He said to his apostles, stay in me and I will stay in you. I have done the will of my father, you too. Do my will and keep. With the commandments that I have given you, love each other. The work of the kingdom of God starts from faith and love. And faith needs to be taken care of. The treasure of faith. has been hidden in clay pots. I will read a very familiar part from the Bible. Where we can see the care and grace of God and that every person that is born on this earth is born as a child of God. So that he can stay there because we always have a war with the enemy of the souls in us. We see this battle going around us. People are going further from the Word of God, and we should more and more hold on to Christ, who is our Lord and Savior. Peter, we taught by Jesus about the kingdom of God. And all the time we need as well so that we wouldn't lose the peace and the joy and this righteousness that is valid in the eyes of God. Here, Jesus was traveling in the northern parts of Galilee. And he was traveling with his disciples south. And there Jesus had taught them for about three years. And he had done powerful works.
and by doing miracles, he wanted to wake people's hearts to believe that he is the Messiah sent by God. And here, he asked the disciples, what do people think about him? Son of man. And the answers were, some think that he's John the Baptist, Elijah, or one of the prophets. So, Jesus brought to mind the prophets of the past. And it reflects that it brought to mind the prophets of the past. It reflects that that they had in mind the powerful works that they had done. They prepared both for Jesus Christ. said in the sermon that God's kingdom has come close. Repent. God's kingdom has been here on earth during the Old Covenant. These prophets were messengers of the Word of God. God was speaking to the people through prophets. But now he's speaking through Jesus Christ. So the promise predicted by the prophets and talked about the promise. The promise in Jesus was fulfilled. And it is good that we have strong a full word that supports us in the work of God's kingdom. The gospel and believing. It's like a bottom and a cold bottom. same power of the Bible it was there during the covenant. It was said, Lord Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And this was the word that they, the old covenant believers, used in their battle in faith. Unbelief is the heart giving up faith. Jesus continues asking and asked what the disciples had 
I learned about him. Simon Peter answered, You are Christ, the Son of the living God. They had seen the miracle works of Jesus and were convinced that this is Lord Jesus Christ. And he asked them, how was this clarified? And Peter said, with personal faith. Peter was at Lake Genesaret when Jesus told Peter, put the nets on the other side of the boat. And if you remember, we got a very large Peter said after Jesus invited I am sinful go away those who find this sinfulness in their, in their own hearts they need a savior your grace that have been thrown into sin we have had the possibility to hear from the mouth of another believer this joyful gospel You can leave all your sins in Jesus' name. It is a name. Jesus said to Peter, You are right, Simon. Your flesh and blood did not tell you that. But my father in heaven. There has been a lot of work, brothers and sisters, here in Pogasiarvi to construct the facilities here at Pudasiarvi for these summer services. This is not something that Only human hands can do what God has been here. We have had the possibility to listen to the Word of God, and He has let His gospel shine brightly here in this great oasis in the desert. We have gotten strengthening. To our faith. God wants to protect us in midst of this wicked world and we would preserve in faith until the end. And Jesus says here. You are righteous, Simon, son of Peter, because your flesh and blood did not tell you that, but my father in heaven. When Jesus has been given to us, we have a very important task 
to preach the forgiveness of sins. It is an important task. And I hope that we remember there in our homes. On this rock, I want to build my kingdom. There is no other other foundation than Christ. He is the victor over hell, the enemy of the souls, and we are very protected. It is a marvelous gift that God wants. He wants to protect us. When Peter also had the possibility to be taught by Jesus. He did not have a sort of personality and he was sinful as we all. Luther says in one of his texts that may we never think that we are not sinful. Sin lives in us. And in the covenant of a good conscience, we can be putting sin away every day, every moment. It talks about the power of the keys. Which is the power of to the heavenly kingdom and it is very powerful that we have the possibility to reach the forgiveness of sins. It is not our work, it is a work of the Holy Spirit. I was in Sudan and I went to visit a believing elderly lady. I, she was moving away from Sonantula and I wanted to say farewell as she was leaving and I was there at the local hospital and I saw a fellow sister and I asked her, what did I say to her from my side? And she said, you could preach the things forgiven. And I went to the room and I looked at her, the older grandma. There was nobody else in the room, but she was looking around and she was so happy. And, and I went to her and I preached. And I think that she was already looking. To eternity. Maybe there would not have been for me to be there, but it was And I have experienced that. It is, it is God's work to preach the gospel. We don't have it. That we are present. Only what God has done to us. That was we can share with each other.
God has tricked us in many ways. There have been many trials and temptations in different walks of life. And God has raised with grace in that way. The gospel will bring the power of God. And it is important that we remember how to use the gospel's gift of grace. And in homes, we parents have an important task bless each other with the gospel. When there are when there is sin, there are bad words, we can use the gospel. God has never abandoned a sinful person. The experience walking here towards the big tent today, the grace. Is what helps us grow. And it doesn't matter how it feels like God is guiding us on the path. And These summer services title is Are You Dear to Me? And the forgiveness of Jesus We want to present this walk of faith to you all that yet are not believing. It is not in our own power, it is in the power of Christ. I will not throw that away. If you, if there is somebody listening to this sermon that is yet not believing, it is a day of grace. There is a possibility to own his righteousness, Jesus Christ, this inner peace that we get in the gospel, this peace has been, it has come from the little cross of Golgotha, what Jesus said, it has been fulfilled. God redeemed us sinful people, every one of us. Even you that you in your heart, what is going to be happening to me after I die? And here is the answer. He wants to forgive all your sins and temptations and give you peace. This is the peace, inner peace of the child of God. It is a place of rest. It has been amazing to be here for summer services. And We have been encouraged to say God's word. The Holy Spirit is not coming from us, it comes from our God. And we have felt Peter said to Jesus when people left and they were angry, angry at his preaching, and the disciples said, who would we go to? You have the keys to eternal life. 
and this is how we feel there has not been a desire to leave anywhere. The enemy of the souls is like a roaring lion. roams around us. Which he, who he can devour. And it's good for us to remember the alphabet of faith. That God is the one that is helping us in this journey. I know that at home, many of you have not been able to, who have not been able to come, have been sorrowfully, for whatever reason, have not been able to attend summer services this year. And sometimes, happen suddenly that life can end as we can see on Saturday and we should take care that we have our sins forgiven and peace with God. Christ is life and death is my victory. Death cannot be us when we have our sins forgiven and when we protect each other through his spirit God has given these speeches of encouragement that we would support each other on the walk of faith that we do not want to leave anybody behind if you see somebody becoming weary we encourage them to walk on in the midst of temptation doubts and trials where this voice is you can freely believe all your sins are given God has not forgotten what you have been redeemed with Jesus' blood. Might be. Jesus wants to talk to you regardless if you have, for example, worked a lot here at summer services and not been listening to the word that much this time. He wants to encourage you. to the work of the kingdom of God. It is not taken from us. It always gives. God has promised to bless our many mothers are carrying and doing the tasks of a mother to remember that children are a gift of God and to look to the future. God has said that there are many different works and positions
for every one of us, it is good to listen to the call and information. For young and for old, for us older people, if we want to go for a walk, we don't want to sit anywhere. It's good to take the cool application and listen. It is a great blessing. Yesterday, with my wife, we went to the publish shop. And it was wonderful that there were people helping and we have a bag of publications to take home. It's always very good to bring back something home and it is good to have this in in life. It is a good richness. Now is the time. It is now the time because sometimes we feel that we don't want to feed. Now the time is that we do not have We can listen to the publications. When we get a little bit of distance between the world and us, and when we pause at the more important things in life, be protected, dear brothers. Heart of our Lord and Savior, all your sins forgiven in Jesus' name, in the precious blood. In Jesus' name, blood, all your sins are forgiven. We are traveling friends, brothers and sisters. We do not become more poor when we can share what we have. In Jesus' name, blood. All your sins forgiven. Leave all your sins forgiven. We don't become more poor when we share what we have. Faith can be life turning and close hell. Us, and we are not wish for anybody to do that We have this invitation to believe we wish that you would repent and see what good there is in the kingdom of God. I have come here with. To ask, I believe, all my history. I want to move in Jesus' name. Amen.
Ari Mikula is keeping this sermon, and he is going to read from the Ecclesiastics, Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, the first verse. Remember now thy Creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. Amen. When I was asked to serve about three months ago, it made me very anxious. But during these three months, brothers and sisters have come and encouraged me. And even during these services, they have encouraged me. And they have said, that they remember us ministers. And so it is. We children want to be remembering these small workers in the field that God could open his word according to his word will. And so for that reason, reason even now, in many doubts, and in great fear, I want to ask, can I believe my own sins forgiven? I want to believe together with you and travel on this road toward heaven. When I received this request, I thought, and pondered, what could I speak of? For this day, and these words of God came to my mind. When I think of you young people, you who are here at your tents, on your journey home, or already at home, starting your week, work week, I want to be encouraging you in this bad world, and, it's time. and I want to give you words for the future that God who has created us all has created us the whole world created us people in his image God wants to be calling us from far and near his children in his kingdom. Our text began, Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. This word, remember, I thought of this. We all have memories of our youth and our childhood, and as we get older, we have many memories of our life. Some of our memories are good and pleasant, and some memories are more sorrowful. But above all, we are exhorted to remember our Creator, I said, the Creator who has created us all has promised to give us our life. We remember when He 
paradise, the first human pair whom God had given this paradise of Eden. There they were able to eat and enjoy the fruits and the food that God had given. But God gave them a warning that they should not eat of the tree that is in the middle of paradise so that they would not die. But the enemy of the soul who is the king of this world who had been thrown out of heaven already then his will was such that man would not be saved Bitter because he had lost the battle in heaven against God and against God's angels. God does not give any man glory. Glory belongs to God. But the enemy is sly. And as we remember, he planted that seed of doubt into the hearts of men and, the, and their minds and thoughts. In the same way, he does this work today that God truly said so. Then, then it speaks of youth in the text. To remember the Creator Ways of the youth. I myself have received the grace to return to my early twenties. I was a prodigal son. And then when I, I started to I started to read the Bible when I was asked to be a Sunday school teacher. I remember I thought, I don't understand anything about the Bible. But throughout the years, and even when it was said that you learn yourself when you teach children. So I did. In my own mind, it is the best class that you can do the children the most important thing is when we teach and instruct our children that we should remain in the truth of God's word. I remember one incident how important it is that we don't play around or say something wrong to the children, to the little children. Especially if you're a Sunday school teacher has taught them they they think that everything is true if the Sunday school teacher tells them it's hard to correct these matters afterwards because a child doesn't understand because he says, well, teacher said so. So it is important that we remain in the truth of God's word and in his teaching and how important it is for the youth and for all of us. That we would examine and read the Bible the word of God. And when we read, examine the word of God, we receive instruction that from there, which are important in our time. I remember my dear mother many times said,
Bible. It says so and so in the Bible. It is important that we read, that we can receive guidance and instruction from the Bible. As it is said, the Bible is a book of instructions for us and we should follow it. And I even think of the youth. as I have my own children, how important it is and how our hope is as parents that they would be preserved in this divine way because the enemy of the soul works in a very sly manner. He wants to pull them away Pull our youth away from the kingdom of God, from the grace care of God. In many different ways. And even this day, we have these things which touch the youth and also us. Before, technology wasn't the same for as it is now. Although it is important, this modern technology, because now sermons not only can be heard here, they can be heard throughout the world. Yesterday, last evening, we were participated in an education where we examine the effects of the social media. And, or we, we could see how throughout the world the word of God was able to be heard throughout the social media and how many people had received the in their hearts and have been in contact and wanted to speak of most precious matter to us. Uh, we can say that there's a small group that gathers in these summer services. Even when 80,000 people have gathered during this week but when God can do the work, this word can be heard, or many hundreds of millions of people can hear this word. This is not our work, but this is the work of God. And for that reason, I would want to tell the youth, when you, as you endeavor, Lives, in your school lives, and you have different languages that you can study. This is a great gift of God that it pays, especially you boys, pays to take your studies seriously. That wills that at some time in your life you are able to serve in different languages. May be able to serve the kingdom of God and be calling people from around the world into his kingdom. I have been on these mission trips to Africa and I have marveled at this, what God has opened unto his children, his word. God knows. He wants to call into his kingdom 
in our time. It is a clear matter that we, even this evening, or this evening, are here in these services, listening to these sermons. It is a great grace of God that God has affected your heart that you also have received your own sins forgiven and you have received peace with God. That is the greatest gift and treasure that a person can have in this time. I remembered one trip to Africa. We were on a service trip to the northern part of Togo. And at one locality, when we were keeping services, an elderly man walked along the road and he related to us that the word struck his or touched his ear. It was a small group of us here, four, there, four or five of us. He stopped to listen. As I remember, it was my turn to speak, and I was speaking of the treasure that you can feel, how important it is. How important it was to that person who found it. He sold all that he had and he brought that food. And the gospel was preached. And he said, when they asked, Thing to say, he said, he came to listen. He said, This, your tithing is so important that next time go visit our chief and ask him to call the whole village here to your station. And we had to say that it is so. And we asked him, how about you? That do you want to believe? Yes, he said, yes, I want. I, d I already believed the gospel when I heard it. So <clears throat> it was opened, this matter opened to me that it was not us who do this work. Our small members, God has protected us. And to do this work, it is the Holy Spirit in the hearts of people. And the Holy Spirit opened his own condition to him, and he was able to believe his sins forgiven. And he blessed him again. And in Jesus' name, and God, he was able to believe his sins forgiven. That is the Ethiopian. He left rejoicing to continue his journey. This work that we do is precious work. It is does not depend on us servants of the word. Every person who has received and the child of God who has received his sin forgiven are are obligated to forgive each other, should forgive one another. And if someone asks us for the basis of our faith, we can tell them that the most important thing is and the most precious thing is that we forgive each other our sins. And even in Africa, some of the names of the churches are the Church of the Forgiveness of Sins, or the Temple of the Forgiveness of Sins. They openly want to tell how a person can 
receive the forgiveness of their sins. And this part of the Bible continues. Uh, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, our life of faith, there are many situations, many moments, when the enemy of the soul attacks, and he indicates, or he tell, makes us think that are we acceptable, acceptable to be a part of this kingdom of God and the will of the soul is that he draws his nets tighter and tighter so that he would be able to cause even one to fall and lose this most important gift that what they call in this world. We have doubts and temptations, and the enemy of the soul can be affected. Us in that way, how we are motto of these services tells us am I beloved of you and I wondered or I thought of this when Jesus asked am I beloved to you we know In the book of Moses, God asked Moses to lead his people out of Egypt. And when God called Moses, and Moses asked, Who, well, who whom shall I say has sent me? And God answers, I, I have sent you to lead your people out of the land of Egypt to that promised land. And here we can also be understanding that when Jesus asked these words of Peter, and he asks us these same words, is God. Do we love God? Through faith, we understand and believe that God was the creator, Jesus was the redeemer, and the Holy Spirit is the sanctifier and teacher, which is in our midst. He's our own and the same, and the world does not understand this. But through the Holy Spirit, God wants to be teaching and instructing us our time on this way and journey. We have been able to experience how God has called people from many countries from around the world into the hearing of his word. We are one in the same family. We are brothers and sisters journeying toward heaven. We have a father in heaven and we have a mother on this earth who takes care of us and heals us and admonishes us and we need an admonishment and healing. And we should be obedient to the voice of the Father. Even in our home life, at times the Father is at work 
and the mother, many times it is the mother who carries most of the responsibility and we should listen to and obey what our mother and father teach us and instruct us in the psalms Oh God, thou hast taught me from my youth, and hitherto have I declared thy wondrous works. And also in the Psalms, Psalm 119, where how a youth can remain on the correct road, where Withal shall a young man cleanse his way, by taking heed thereto according to my word. Even though these are recorded for the youth, it's, these words speak to all of us that we should obey the word of God. But we know that sin happens to us, and the enemy of the soul attacks and wants to make the word of God questionable. So for that reason, if this moment, if the enemy of the soul has been able to tease you and you have doubts in your heart and in your mind, you can believe that you are forgiven at this moment in Jesus' name, atoning blood. This grace gospel is that which cleanses us and it is the strongest and best as if we can say at this in this way that it is the laundry detergent that washes us even our dirtiest clothes clean and white. And if we could remember While the years draw nigh, when the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have, I have no pleasure in them, I say that if we can endeavor as obedient children and putting sin away, it attaches to us. That especially for the you know, that we have no pleasure in them. That we would avoid these temptations of the devil or the enemy. These temptations that often are in the world. And as we have those who have come to these services who do not yet own this grace, we don't want to offend them in any way. We do not want to tease them or hurt their feelings in any way, cause offense. So that they would close their ears. This most precious word. Many times earlier in discussions, and there have been has been this understanding. When we discuss matters with other people, and when we of this world we do not want to cut off their ears. We don't want to offend them in any way. God wants to be calling people even today from this dark world. He wants to be calling those who do not know 
this great gift. Even yet today, this calling is heard from God's kingdom. If you hear my word, do not harden your heart and believe the gospel. If someone hears these words, feels in his heart that I do not belong in this group. Or if your conscience is troubled, you can, even at this moment, believe your unbelief and all its fruits and sins in Jesus' name and atoning blood. And follow us and the Lord Jesus Christ on this road and journey. When these days come, which here in the Bible, the days that please us. John writes to the fathers and youth in his gospel. In the first epistle of John, in the second chapter, he writes, I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I write unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because ye have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because ye have known I have written unto you, fathers, because we have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because ye are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. Here, John wants to be reminding of that which is the most important and precious matter on this earth that we can be following the Father, the Holy Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. John writes in the Revelations also. To him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out. I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. Our destination is our home in heaven. Each one of us in this time have, has their own home and it is precious and beloved, but it is a home for this time. As Jesus told his disciples that I go home and there, in my father's home, there are many rooms, and I will prepare a place for you. It is the most important that our name is written in the book of life, that on the last day we can hear that beautiful call that come, my blessed
to own that which has been promised from the beginning, eternal life in heaven. We are not told very much about in the Bible about what awaits us in heaven, but that there is no longer sin no longer weighs us down. We can sing praises of thanks forever from forever to forever before the raised throne of Christ. When we talk of eternity, it means it does not end. Many times I myself have looked at the sky and have seen the stars. Behind them there is an unendless eternity, but we are still on the journey toward our home. And we often stumble and we often doubt. We often fall into sin. But isn't it a beautiful matter for us today? But a brother can to a brother and a sister to a sister and a sister to a brother and a brother to a sister. When we offering and claiming the of the gospel to each other. This morning, dear brothers and sisters, you can uplift your heart and believe all your sins and travel and temptations God's forgiven in Jesus' name and atoning blood. And as we believe in this way, day by day and moment by moment, have that hope that once we can be able to see our Redeemer face, Redeemer's face in eternal life. So we can remain believing this morning. In Jesus' name, sins are forgiven. In Jesus' name, and Amen.